So this integral um, if we just had this then we know how to do it. So if we didn't have the check on the top then this would be straightforward. We'd use a semicircular contour. Um, the problem is check, which is 1 over cosh, has infinitely many singularities going up the imaginary axis. But we can't use a rectangular contour because the a squared plus x squared, we can never get the same function again if we replace x by x plus 2 pi i. We'll never get the same function. So what can we do in this case? Well, the residue theorem in its original form says that we must have a finite number of singularities. But what we can do is cheat a little bit and say, well, we just we'll just take the limit. Um, we'll consider a contour containing maybe a, a finite number and then just gradually expand the contour and allow it can uh, take the limit. And so we'll end up with an infinite number of residues to sum, but that's okay um, in the end. So the, when the original residue theorem says that we're meant to have a finite number of residues, but if you can have an infinite number as long as the sum converges, that's the, that's the key thing. Now the second thing is that you've en you'll end up with a sum, an infinite sum, and the question is whether you can actually evaluate that sum in terms of a known function. So that's another problem. So in this particular case, um, what we could attempt to do is say, okay, yes, we realize that there are um, infinitely many poles because of this check pi, pi x. So the poles um, are going to be located at, well, because of the pi x, they're going to be located at z equals n plus a half i. Okay, all these poles from this. And then we're also going to have poles at um, uh, z equals plus or minus um, i a as well. So let's have a go with a semicircular contour. Okay, normally would, we wouldn't use a semicircular contour, but really we don't have much. It, it's worth a try. What, what, let's just see what happens with a semicircular contour. We're going to get infinitely many poles, but the rectangular one is not going to help us because of this, this a squared plus x squared. So, um, what does that give us? If we can show that, so we take as usual the limit of r goes to infinity around this contour. So we've got check r pi z over a squared plus z squared. Okay, so that's going to give us the integral we want along here. That's r goes to infinity plus the integral around this arc of check pi. Okay, so um, with some uh, with some experimentation or some arguments, um, we can probably show that uh, this this quantity uh, goes to zero. I won't. I, I'm not really interested in dealing with that at, at the moment. What I'm more interested in is what we can do uh, with these, um, this sum of residue. So we're going to have infinitely many, many residues. So what's that actually going to look like? Well, 
the sum of the residues. So we've got um, i is going to be 2 pi i times the sum of the residues. An infinite sum of the residues. So as we said, we're going to have a residue at... We can divide that into a residue at um, uh, i a plus an infinite sum of residues at z equals m plus a half i. So let's actually just see what that's going to look like. So we first we'll do the residue at, so let's check pi z over z squared plus z squared at i a plus um, the other ones, which we'll deal with later. So first one. So using um, P over Q dashed, we'll end up with check uh, of pi I A over 2 I A plus dot 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 so that's going to so the 2 i cancels with this 2 i here um, shek of pi i a is the same as 1 over cosh pi i a and, and cosh of pi i a is just cos of pi a so actually shek of pi i a is just um, sec pi a so we end up with um, pi sec pi a over a. And then the dot, dot, dot was we said, OK, we've got um, the other poles are at n plus a half i. And we're going to have infinitely many. So we're basically summing over. Um, all possible values of n, n equals minus infinity to plus infinity of, and then the residue of this at those those values. So now what we're doing is our q is cos pi z. And our p is a squared plus z squared. So we end up with 1 over a squared plus n plus a half squared times i. So that's going to give us a minus. Okay. And then we've got... Um, our Q is cos pi Z. So differentiating that gives us shine pi and it's n plus a half I. And I forgot the 2 pi I. And a factor of pi as well from the differentiating. Differentiating the cos pi z on the bottom gives me a factor of pi as well. So I get the pi out coming out here. Um, so shine of pi n plus a half i is the same as i sine of n plus a half pi. And that gives me, well, when n, n is 0, I get plus 1. When n is 1, I get minus 1. So that just gives me minus to the power n. So my final answer is pi over a sec pi a plus 2. The pi's cancel. The i cancels with the i when I turn it into sine. So I just get n equals minus infinity, infinity of minus to the n 
over a squared minus n plus a half squared. Okay, so the problem is that we have this infinite sum to evaluate. Now, as we'll do later in the course, um, oh, and I should say that A is not allowed to be n plus a half. Otherwise, we get a problem with this. And we have to, if, if, if that happens, then if A is n plus a half, then that implies that we've got a double pole somewhere. Um, and then we have to do something different, obviously. Um, so this, we have to make sure that for all n, a is not equal to n plus a half. Um, now, there are techniques for evaluating sums like this, but they don't always give you a, a function that you know about. And it turns out that in this case, um, you can evaluate this sum, but not in terms of functions that you already know about. Um, it can be expressed in terms of something called the, uh, not the gamma function, but the digamma function. Um, so this is all we can do at this stage. Um, we can convert this integral into an infinite sum. Um, that's the best we can do without using this special function, which we can express this, we express this sum in terms of.